All right, all right, all right, all right. It's time for me to do this roasting again. Yeah, you didn't think I was through with you, huh? Nah, 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 nah. I ain't through with you yet, okay? Before I um uh, start this uh the the major ether, I'm gonna start with the um, mild one first, okay? Now, as we've gone back and forth about this many times, you always said that I am not trying to discredit Hopkins or Hagler or anybody else, particularly Hopkins, because you seem to go after him more and just just like Hagler himself. Right. You said that at one point when we had our exchange one time before I blocked your ass a year ago. You said that I never discredited Hopkins for beating Simon Brown, Tito De La Hoya. That's you twisting shit. I didn't twist anything. That's exactly what you said. I say that Tito De La Hoya made him. Simon Brown wasn't me. Wasn't doesn't mean shit. He was never a middleweight. He never pursued. Manny Pacquiao or Kell Brook. Actually, uh, Golovkin did pursue Manny Pacquiao. And the fact that you, well, not Kell Brook, that he did pursue Mayweather, okay? He pursued those guys, okay? But we'll get to that later and why he did, all right? But yet you wanted to be in denial about it. More lies from you. I'm not telling lies, obviously. You can see something again and again doesn't change the facts, right? So it's very idiotic that you say that, right? Because, and let me tell you something, all right? I don't go around spreading any window, all right? I don't do that. I have no motive to do that. I'm here to state the facts, and that's what I do, okay? You, on the other hand, have lied on multiple occasions, right? Like you lied about that you never said that Golovkin was the best fighter in the world when you try to call me out for debate after that the disastrous ether you got from me and the librarian when you came to our hangout, on the hangout, on Boston Librarian's hangout, right? You wanted to debate me. And you declined my debate when I asked you when I set the topic on Roman Gonzalez versus Gennady Golovkin, right? And I called you out on it because you're not confident on it because you just said that Golovkin was the best fighter in the world. And I put out a roast video saying that you're still causing trouble, and I screenshot those comments. And then you turn around and said that oh, I was being sarcastic. Nope, you're a fucking liar. You meant what you said, and you got caught. Just like how you got caught by Chris Goban when you denied that you ever said that Chris Eubank was going to beat Billy Joe Saunders. And then you flipped it and said that I predicted Billy Joe Saunders beat Chris Eubank. Got caught in the two different lies right there. All right? Don't say you were sarcastic. You just got caught. You were trying to get away from it as far as you can. Fucking liar. But anyways, when you made that initial statement about um, not uh, discrediting Hawkins for beating Simon Brown... This is where I caught you with that contradiction. You say, you know what? You do realize you just said that you never discredited Hawkins for being Brown. And then you say that Brown didn't mean shit because he was a welterweight. You contradicted yourself in one statement alone. This comment is the worst one you made so far. Well, actually, the last comment, you beat this comment by saying that um, Tony Z I mean, that um, Gennady Golovkin is greater than Tony Zell. I mean, if that's not the worst comment you ever made, then <laughs> that is. Okay, but here you are later, a year later, still shitting on um, Hopkins for fighting Simon Brown, even though Simon Brown fought for that mandatory position, that middleweight. Okay, now, are you honestly going to tell us that Gennady Golovkin beating the likes of um, Milton Nunez, Nelson Julio Tapia is far greater than um, Hopkins beating Simon Brown? Are you really going to tell us that? Really? Now, speaking of the fact that Simon Brown didn't do shit at uh, middleweight, huh? Well, what about Gabe Rosado, right? What about Kell Brook? Huh? What about um, Nelson Julio Tapa? What about um, Grosdock? Huh? What about those guys? They didn't do shit at middleweight. Willie Monroe didn't do shit at middleweight, obviously. Well, you know, obviously he's a middleweight, but he didn't really do much other than boxing, win the Boxino tournament, right? Uh, what about Nushiro um, Yoshida? What did he do at middleweight? He didn't do a goddamn thing. So if you're going to discredit Simon Brown right, for being a welterweight, then you might as well discredit all the other guys that Golovkin beat, those smaller guys that he beat, those 154-pound guys and those welterweights he beat, right? Because they didn't do shit at middleweight. But let's give Golovkin full credit for those wins. Yeah, yeah, right? Just because you keep, you know, just like uh, you kept denying that I wasn't shitting on Hopkins, I was just stating the facts that they are equally similar to uh, to Golovkin when the, before they got their big fights. That is not true. That's why I called you out on it, and that's why the librarian called you out on it, and the librarian's been trying to get you on to get on the hang out debate on it, but you refuse to do it. So that goes to show that you're not you're not really um, confident in what you're saying because you're just spending some bullshit. If you're gonna say something, stick to it, defend it. 
debate it, but you don't have the guts to do it. So anyways, you said that 164 is not on record. Lawford say the situation is blah, blah, blah on comment. But yet I showed you evidence right here that actually it is documented. Abel Sanchez and Glopper said that fight won't be a goal unless it's 164. That's what they wanted. They said, we'll fight war, but he's got to agree to a catch weight. That's what they wanted, right? And then you and others said that, well, trainers say one thing, so we shouldn't take Abel Sanchez's word seriously. Really? Really? Then why did you take um, Floyd Mayweather's senior words seriously when he um, mentioned fights, um, potential fights about Floyd Mayweather? You took his words very seriously. So why shouldn't we take Abel Sanchez's words seriously when it came to Golovkin? Really? That makes no sense. I mean, as usual, you, you're flip-flopping all over the place. All right. So. <laughs> so the thing is, is that, um, <clears throat> again, back to the fact that you keep denying that um, you weren't trying to trash Hagler or Hopkins' um, uh, uh, resume, but trying to make a comparison between Golovkin and uh, that they're the same, really. But you, when you did that stupid-ass video, right, where it says a, a real GGG breakdown, you went through Nelson Julio uh, Tapia and Milton Nunez. You said those guys were very credible before Golovkin, when Golovkin fought them. Milton Nunez, Milton Nunez okay, he fought six guys who were debuting. He fought seven other guys with losing records. And better yet, he fought a guy with a losing record before he fought Golovkin. <laughs> All right? He fought a guy who was 8-16-1, and, and yet he was credible before he fought Golovkin? What top 10 guy did he beat before he fought Golovkin? A rhetorical question. None. He didn't beat a top 10 guy. All right? So are you saying that Milton Nunez was a better win than Hagler beating Benny Briscoe. Are you saying that Hagler beating Sugar Ray Seals was, um, was um, uh, Golovkin beating Nunez was a better win than Hagler beating uh, Sugar Ray Seals? Or Alan Mentor, by the way, huh? Benny Briscoe, I already mentioned him already. So are you saying that those were more credible wins than Hagler beating those guys? You cannot be serious when you say that. I mean, if you are serious about that, you need to put that up for debate. I'm serious. You need to do it. But better yet, is Hagler beating Willie Monroe not better than Golovkin beating Drozdok? <laughs> Wait. A uh, rhetorical question. No, it's not. All right. So for you to sit there and say that they're comparable of resumes before they got their big elite fights uh, to Golovkin, it's laughable. It is. Because Golovkin fought 12 guys coming up in weight to fight them. Small guys, which you got you and others to criticize Hagler or Hawkins for doing. Okay. So all I'm asking is for is you for be consistent, but you 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 know you failed to do that. You can't be consistent. All right. So if you want to nitpick resumes, right? Let's go to Golovkin's resume. How many how, how, how many 154 pound guys or 147 pound pound guys combined that he fought? Let's take a look, huh? Shall we? Let's see. Luan Simon, a uh, small guy. Kasiuma, small guy. Uh, Nelson, Nelson, Julio Tapia, small guy. Milton Nunez, small guy. Oh, John Alexander Carvalho, uh, Carvalho. Never heard of him, but I did take a look at it. Small guy, 154 pounds, guy. So that's one, two, three, four, four small guys right there. I uh, see Gabe Rosado, small guy, six. Norbert Hiyoshida, small guy, seven. Matthew Macklin, small guy, eight. Um, who else? Kel Brooks, small guy, nine. Canel Alvarez, small guy, 10. So 10 small guys on his resume. 10. 10. But hey, you know what? I don't hold Golovkin. Uh, um, um, I don't hold him to that. But all I'm asking for is consistency from you and others. If you're going to chastise Hagler Hawkins for smite small guys, then you need to hold Golovkin to that standard as well, but you can't do it. Why you can't do it? Because you've openly admitted that you are a Triple G fanboy. You will not criticize him no matter what. I got the comment. I screenshot that comment. You don't. You can't deny it. You did say that. Okay. We all know you're a, you're a fanboy. All right. So now that I got that out of the way, for the, hypoc the hypocrisy here. So let's go into this video that you made going after me and Mr. Doc. <laughs> this is going to get good. Welcome back. Hold on, let me refresh this. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I think Dan also 
also had some mental issues as well. Him and Boxing Librarian. Well, before you go there, mental issues. Let's see. Uh, you have a fetish for black men. Um, you have your channel platform built around uh, criticizing black men's opinions on certain fighters. Uh, you degrade a lot of black fighters. You created a list called the, my, or, uh, the White Murders Row, a list that uh, is getting wiped out piece by piece. <laughs> Yet, with some of those guys like Tramnasi that you put on that list gets wiped out by a dongo, you call him a, a, a nobody. He's uh, he wasn't incredible. You know, all of a sudden he's not a a, a, a so-called quote unquote a good fighter. Wow. Okay. Talk about flip flops and talk about mental cases, right? Just like you have, you say one thing and then you go back and say another thing. Then you go back saying this thing like you have with the Simon Brown and Bernard Hawkins situation. Talk about mental cases. Or better yet, um, what what is it with you and your alcoholism, huh? Maybe you should, you need to get a psychiatric evaluation on that. Hmm? Let's continue. Uh, or better yet, race baiting all the time. What's up with you and, and tribalism? You, you, you're so fixated on that, right? Mm. Anyways, let's continue. Today, these guys, of course, made a video saying, now the YTBC cop is a boxing historian. Yep. I laughed my ass off. Uh, I didn't hear specifically everything that he had to say, but I think... Of course not, know. because you skipped through it, because you tried to uh, distort the video. Uh, you know, as usual, you're trying to make me look bad. It's all good. I expect that from you. But, yeah, there's a lot of things in there that you didn't play. You refused to play because everything I said in there was fact that you couldn't debunk. So you try to nitpick and say, well, uh, well, let me go ahead and nitpick this and make his, make you know, make him look bad. So, uh, or Dan the Man look bad. So that way I prove my point, which you can't do. You can never debate me. You can never beat me on debate. So stop trying. But anyways, let's continue. Propping Wilder, uh, comparing him to Shavers, and, and trying to act as if he's done more than Shavers has. Uh, and I made a video, and then they were commenting on something like that. I didn't watch all of it. I just turned it on and just exactly caught a small section where I came up. So I just want to address that directly. Dan always does this, and so does the boxing librarian. They always address you and, and tag other people's responses towards you. No, I didn't do that. This is what you. I didn't do that. Uh, so let's just listen to him speak, and then I will address each point one by one. Well, just so obviously you didn't address each point one by one because you nitpicked my video, which is very typical of you. But anyways, I'm going to let you continue. Clear it. The video that I made, the videos I made, I mean, uh, I'm being clear and concise. No, you're not. Videos. No, you're not. Dan and Boxing Librarian choose not to listen to what you say. Well. They choose to interpret it and then rehash it the way they think you said it no you know, the meanings that they no contribute to what you said right this is always what no said. as i just uh specifically shown that when you clearly said that cyber brown didn't do shit at welterweight right i mean at middleweight right so hawkins doesn't get deserve no credit for that win but yet you turn around and say that I'm not discrediting um, Hawkins for fighting Simon Brown. I'm just saying what it is. But yet you contradict yourself. You say you're not discrediting Hawkins for fighting Simon Brown. Then you turn around and say that Simon Brown wasn't shit. So how's that not twisting your words? That's exactly what you said. You you stripped Hawkins for fighting the guy, right? And just like many well, a couple years back when we first interacted, you ripped it to Hawkins for fighting Hagler. I mean, fighting um, De La Hoya and Trinidad. You stated that those are his best wins on the records against welterweights. Okay, I told you that, well, welterweights have always fought middleweights, historically. So why is that a problem now? Oh, that doesn't count because they weren't well, middleweights, so we have to take them out. Okay, I said, in that case, we need to take out Ishida. We need to take out Simon. You need to take out Macklin. You need to take out Rosado. You need to take out... Um, who else you need to take out? Um, damn, there's a lot of 154 pound guys he fought. Um, but you get my drift, all right? So let's take out those guys, right? And what do you leave Golovkin with, huh? You couldn't answer. Yeah, you look stupid when I did that, right? The point is, just like the librarian pointed out in that hangout that we had together, is that you cannot take people off their resumes because those fights happened, they were sanctioned, and the results were done. When Hagler fought Duran and Hearns, those guys were middleweights. He beat them. 
You cannot do that, all right? If you're going to do that, then we can do the same for Golovkin by taking out the guys that we mentioned, even though they don't come close to what Hagler, I mean, Kearns and what Duran has done. Not even close, all right? But just the gist of it, that's just the one to point that out, all right? So, uh, yeah, let's continue here with this. This is the problem with him and why it's frustrating to even talk to him about boxing. No, but I'm a fair guy. You just don't like the fact that I debunk your points. That's what it is. <laughs> Let's continue. It's a horrible thing to watch a person's mind come on in. I agree. Right. It, it, it's like ever since war, he's speaking of Hedge, man, ever since war's retired, ever since he's retired, these guys have become realistic. First they said they want him out of the sport. Now they're criticizing him when he's out because these guys, uh, I'm one of these guys he's referring to, but no, I did not refer to you as dumbass. If I was referring to you, I would di- address you directly. You know me. I don't sugarcoat anything. I never said anything about wanting. No, first of all, I was addressing other people that I was interacting with about the situation with Ward. Okay? I was addressing them, not you. So, stop drinking. All right? Because your brain cells is really depleting because you're losing your train of thought. <laughs> I'm surprised you're still an educator. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue. Ward out of the sport. Did I? Show me the one video where I said anything about wanting Ward out of the sport. I mean, I'm not a I I didn't say you wanted him out of the sport. I was addressing I others who did it. I fight Adonis Stevenson. That's what I wanted. I never made videos talking about him out of the sport. Yeah. I'm the one we wanted him to fight Adonis Stevenson. We all did. Andre Ward to move to 175 to fight Kovalev because I saw it as the best opportunity for both guys. So no, 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 no. You're lying there. No, you're lying. Let me tell you why you want him to go up to 175. Because you want him to get away from Golovkin as far as possible. Why? Because you knew if that fight, if there was every any chance of that fight getting made, you knew that Ward was going to win that fight. You knew that. Because you didn't want Golovkin's uh, reputation uh, to be damaged. Well, pretty much is damaged now, given the fact that we see how, how he performs against elite, you know, top-tier competition now. So... You knew that that possibility, you know, you knew that realm of possibility was probably going to happen. And you was campaigning the best way you can to not make sure it didn't happen. Because you didn't want to see another uh, Guillermo Reganau and uh, uh, and uh, Nanito Donaire take place. And we all know that you couldn't get over that fact that Donaire got humiliated and embarrassed by Reganau. You've been putting on a hit campaign against them ever since. So, anyways, let's continue. What are you talking about? Yeah, I know what I'm talking you know, about. Because other people said things like that. Don't attach it to me. I'm not attaching it to you, stupid use it fuck. On your fucking podcast to try to make it seem as if this is something that I've said because that's not true. I never said it. I did say you so say that. Just stick to the fucking facts. I am. Stop always pulling in other people's arguments and attaching it to me. I did not attach it to you. He didn't fight Adonis Stevenson or he didn't fight this guy, that guy. I'm like, well, God, this guy, this guy. You know who the fuck he didn't fight. He didn't fight Butte to become the undisputed 168-pound fucking champion. Yeah, let's stop right there. Yeah, he did fight Butte. I came out and said that I wish he would have fought Butte, all right? I did say that, okay? But since you're going to uh, hold that against war for saying, well, he didn't clean out the division, he didn't dominate the division because he didn't fight Butte, okay, fine. All I said is, is that, well, since you praised Vladimir Klitschko, you said that he dominated his division over a decade, which he did, all right? You said he cleaned out his division, but yet, when I pointed out that he never fought Calvin Brock, he never fought David Tua, he never fought Haseem Rockman in his early run as a heavyweight champion, and then in his later years, he never fought Wilder, he never fought Stavern. Yes, the Wilder situation, yes, Wilder was being very passive about fighting Vladimir Klitschko when he picked up the belt. But before that, Stavern was the champion. Why didn't Vladimir make a fight with Stavern? Yes, I know about the WBC mandatory situation that got ordered. But Vladimir Klitschko was the guy. He had more. He had so much clout in that heavyweight division. He could have pulled strings and get that fight done if he wanted to. But he didn't do it. So if you're going to hold that against Ward for not fighting the Boutte, you become undisputed. Obviously, Boutte only had one belt. But then we're, we're talking about we're drifting over to Stevenson. But um, before I get to that point, let's continue. Fight there you go. Now, since you're going to say that, then you got to hold Vladimir Klitschko accountable for not becoming undisputed champion. The same way you're going to hold Ward accountable for doing that, right? Yes, I know about his brother, but let's besides the point. He did fight his brother. We all know that's not going to happen. Wasn't going to happen. But Bermain Severn was a champion. And Vladimir Klitschko came out on record saying that he wanted to get that belt. He wanted to get that belt, but he didn't pursue it. So 
Why didn't you criticize him? Why don't I'm not better at not criticize him? But why didn't you? Why don't you hold him to that standard like you're holding Ward? All I'm asking for is fair consistency. That's all I'm asking for. Just be consistent. That's all I'm asking for. All right. And better yet, Golovkin, when he uh, had that controversial decision over Jacobs, which many people felt he lost that fight, he had no sanction of body standing in the way of getting you know getting Saunders. He didn't pursue it. He decided to go after uh, Colonel instead for money for you know the money route, right? So, yeah, I was disappointed that Golovkin didn't do it, but I understood why. So I could understand that he's trying to cash out there. So I can, that I was looking at two different perspectives. So I'm not going to hold him to that higher standard. So why don't you hold Golovkin to that standard like you're holding to Ward? Why don't you do that? Oh, you can't because you admit you're a fanboy. You won't criticize him no matter what the circumstances are. You'll find some way to make up an excuse for it to justify what he's doing that you're holding fighters being, you know, since you're being a hypocrite and hold the fighters to other standards for it. But it, it is what it is. But let's continue. To become the 175 pound undisputed champion. Yeah, yeah. Right? Those are who you didn't fight. Yeah. So let's be fucking specific. Yeah, well, Golovkin didn't fight Billy Joe Saunders, right? He hasn't fought Charlo yet. So, again, are you going to hold Golovkin to those standards? Right? No, nope, I doubt that you're going to do that, right? So, let's continue. This is who I said. God damn it, I thought you guys wanted him out. You know, you know, so... No, 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 they wanted him, they wanted him out on their terms. Right, that, yeah, that's a good point. The guy who just chimed in, he's the same guy that fucking said that Marciano was ducking Liston. So let's listen to him because he's totally factual. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Stop right there. So if you're going to attack Mr. Doc for making a historical error about the Liston and Marciano situation, uh, let's go back to where you said not too long ago in a couple videos where you said that Gennady Golovkin is greater than Tony Zale. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's an opinion, number one, which is a stupid-ass opinion, by the way. It's outrageous. And number two, you said that Tony Zell fought Sugar Ray Robinson. Dumb fuck that never happened. <laughs> that fight never happened. How about another historical error that you made when you said that there was a variety of fighting styles in the early, early 1900s? No, you dumb fuck. Like I told you in my last video, there were never a variety of fighting styles back then. It was one generalizing style of fighting. However, there were some exceptions where guys like Joe Gans, Jack Johnson, as you mentioned, and Harry Grip, they tweaked that style a little bit. And then when the 1940s came around, when you had the likes of Robinson, Sugar Ray Robinson, Ezra Charles, the Homer Williams, Archie Moores, and others, and Charlie Burley, they started to develop a different style of fighting. That's where the, the term sweet science came into place, where it was dubbed around that time. All right. So if you're going to go after Mr. Doc for his historical factual, you know, for his historical errors, then and by the way, Mr. Doc more loads a lot more boxing than you. All right. Then maybe you should turn around, look yourself in the mirror and not comment on history since you want to criticize others for making factual errors, historical errors. But anyways, let's continue. Just like Floyd. That's a very good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. And the fact is that he went out on top, pound for pound number one, universally, on, 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 you know, universally, pound for pound number one. He went out on top, undefeated, was a champion. He, you know, he, 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 you know, he fought the best opponents that he could be. And he, you know, you can't dispute what he's done. And you got guys like, oh yeah, you can't dispute the things that he said that he's done. I, I give him credit for the things that he did. You know, winning the Super Six, beating all the great names he fought. I mean, as far as Kovalev, there's a little bit of controversy there, and that's just factual. And as far as yeah, but he won the fight. I have said the same thing all along. It would have been better if he fought Dawson at a catchweight, say 172. Then he would have been in line to win Dawson's lineal 175-pound championship, which would mean that Adonis Stevenson would never have then went on to knock him out to win that title because Ward would have won it. But Ward didn't do that. He drained his ass all the way. Ah, uh, you stupid fuck. You're lying. How many times we got to go through this? Ward did not drain Chad Dawson. Do I have to play that interview, that post-fight interview at the, after um, um, Dawson beat Hopkins for the lineal WBC title, alphabet title? Okay. When he was presented a question, who, what would you like to do next? Who you want to fight next? I want to fight Andre Ward. This is what Chad Dawson said. I want Andre Ward. I want to fight him at 168. That's exactly what happened. 
Andre Ward did not call out Chad Dawson. Andre Ward wasn't pursuing Chad Dawson for a fight. Chad Dawson pursued him. And Chad Dawson was a guy who said that he's confident he'll go down and he can do it at 168. So Andre Ward should be shouldn't be blamed for that. But since you don't want to give him credit for beating Chad Dawson because he was drained, then explain to me what you haven't done yet. Why do you give Manny Pacquiao full credit for um for ha for ha ha having a handful of title fights at catch weights? Particularly one that really gets to me, Miguel Cotto, right? He fought not only Miguel Cotto at a 144 catch weight, but he also had uh, Cotto agree to a rehydration, uh, not to a rehydration clause, to a same day weigh in. But where's the criticism for Pacquiao for winning loads of fights at catch weights for world titles? Huh? Where's the criticism for that? But better yet, Chad Dawson had an opportunity to pick up two belts at super middleweight, all right? But it didn't happen. All right, and he was rated one for pound for pound best at the time. So you got to give Ward credit for that. Again, Ward is not the guy who called him out to that weight class. It was Chad Dawson who called him out. It was Chad Dawson who said he'll go down 168 to fight him. I don't understand why you you and others keep. I'm just, I'm gonna just concentrate on you. I'm not gonna mention others. Look, why do you keep holding that against Andre Ward? I do not understand that, but you refuse to hold that against Manny Pacquiao. That's a, that's a, just a, another sign of you being a hypocrite. Okay, and another thing about Golovkin's catchweight situation with Andre Ward. That is fact, as I pointed out earlier in this video, okay? But it seems like you have no problem if that fight didn't happen, were to get made and Ward somehow agreed to 164, you would have no problem with uh, Golovkin fight Ward at 164. So, <laughs> so again, what's this, what, what, why the double standard? But again, obviously you wouldn't want that fight, just like you don't want that Gary Moriga down Lomachenko fight. So, or it is what it is. Let's continue. Down to one fucking 68. This is a, a guy who defends uh, Ward for not fighting Golovkin at a catchweight, right? This, this is the irony that guys. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, because first of all, Ward cannot make 164. Okay, he started at 160, realized that he was good and comfortable at that weight at the time. His first 12 fights, so he moved up. Okay, and besides, it was Golovkin who called out the 154 pounds and 175 pounds division, but it eventually got scaled down to 168. He was a guy that offered Carl Froch, offered Carl Froch, uh, Miguel Kessler, uh, who else? Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., a full 168 limit. He offered those three guys a fights. But when Andre Ward, the best guy in that division, the king who cleaned it out, right, the top guy in that division, when he responds to the challenge, he was offered a catch weight. How is that fair? Oh, because those guys are big money draws, so that's the reason why Ward deserves, He. that's why Ward that's why Ward needs to take the catch rate rather than those guys. No, 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 no. First of all, Golovkin, which he should be rightfully criticized for, is that when you call out other weight divisions, you don't talk about catch weights. You don't do that, period. It makes you look fucking stupid, all right? Imagine if Andre Ward done that, okay? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and vice versa this. If he had done that, let's say he calls out a, 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 a weight class, and then when one of those fighters responds, then he comes back and says, well, you got to fight me at a catch weight. How would you react to that? Exactly. It'd be blasphemy. All right. I will be first to criticize war for that because that's crazy. You don't call out other weight classes and ask that fighter to, uh, to agree to a catch weight. Don't do that. All right. This is what the simple logic that you have a problem understanding. But it's no surprise in giving that fact that you drink a lot. But it is what it is. <laughs> when, when Golovkin offered a 164 catch weight. Ward Which you denied. And these guys crapped all over Golovkin. Yet yeah. they used the Dawson win as one of the best wins of his career. Exactly. Like I said, Dawson was the guy who went down to fight Andre Ward. Andre Ward didn't ask him to come down. War Dawson said he'll come down to fight him. All Andre Ward did is accept the challenge. <laughs> totally different scenario, bro. Get it together. When he drained the guy from 175 he, all the way down. He did not drain him. How many times we got to go through this? He did not drain him. I'm going to play that video interview for you so that way you can have a better logical and visual understanding. So let's continue. To 168. So don't be hypocritical. I'm not. You know, there was three things he should have did, and I've been consistent fucking all along with that. No, you're not being consistent. Like I said, if you're going to criticize Ward for allegedly training Jad Dawson, which it didn't happen, which you believe, fine. If that's what you believe, fine. Again, I'm looking for consistency. As you say you are, call out Pacquiao. Tell, explain to us why, well, not explain to us, you need to make a video and condemn Mackie, Manny Pacquiao for fighting guys at catchweights, like you're condemning Andre Ward for fighting a drain Chad Dawson. 
I want you to do that. Be consistent, as you say. Be consistent. Let's continue. As far as other things he's done, uh, I didn't hate him for it. I mean, I supported him after the Super Six. Ah, uh, liar. Videos. But this is my opinion. So yep, I'm which is never a fact. I'm telling you. Your opinion is garbage, just like what you said that Tony Zell is not greater than <laughs> Gennady Glovkin. <laughs> Gennady Glovkin is greater than Tony Zell and Rocky Graziano. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. All right. And say that Hawkins is hack and what Golovkin's resume is, but it's more it's comparable to Hawkins and Hagler before they got their big fights against those small against smaller guys. Oh please, oh Jesus Christ! I'll beg you to debate the librarian on that one. All right, debate the librarian on that one, please, if you really believe that. All right, Jesus Christ! Let's continue. The facts. I won't miss him now that he's gone, especially. I'm not saying you should miss him. I never said you should miss him. All I'm saying is give him respect, all right? Because this is the reason why I have a problem with this, all right? Now, when Vladimir Klitschko retired, before he retired, he had a loads of fans who could stand the guy for his fighting tactics. He was one of those modern-day dirty fighters, which you never criticize him for, which you claim you didn't like the guy, all right? But the fact is, is that when he retired, one of his biggest critics, Hatman Strikes Back, which you attacked in the last, you know, the last three days, by the way, for having an objective and fair and accurate uh, criticism of Golovkin, facts about him, you went on a tirade, all right? When he, Vladimir Klitschko retired, Hatman, who's one of uh, Vladimir Klitschko's big, biggest critics, paid respects to him and said, you know what? I may not have liked his fighting style, but he did some great things. He did some great things. I respect him. That's what Hatman did and many others, like myself. Who didn't like the guy either, but I respect what he did in the ring, what he was able to do. Because it's not easy to dominate the way he did in over a decade. It's not easy. So I gave him credit and full respect for what he did. All I'm asking for those who despise Ward to do the same thing. Why? Because Ward is not a controversial guy. Outside the ring, he does the right things. He, take care of, he takes care of his family. He's a dedicated Christian. He does right for his community. So he does right for the sport. I don't know. I, that's why I don't understand why he gets this type of criticism. It just makes no sense and it baffles me. Okay? So all I'm asking for those who pay the same respect to Vladimir Klitschko, give the same respect to Andre Ward. Okay? That's all I'm asking for you to do. But you won't do it. But it is what it is. The fights we wanted to see anyway, which was an Adonis Stevenson fucking fight. Yes. To become undisputed. He was far more interested in taking a cherry pick money fight with Bellew. Oh, you know what? Hypocrite. It was funny, though, because if you're going to criticize a war for getting one big money fight with Bellew, then why are you why? Why did you criticize for Golovkin for avoiding war to go after a big money fight with like the Canelo or Carl Froch? You see where I'm going? <laughs> and better yet, when he, Golovkin had a chance to fight Billy Joe Saunders after pre Pete myself, he took the money route to fight Canelo. When that it was in that a call a cherry pick. Hmm. Why did you criticize Golovkin for that? Ah, hypocrite. You gotta be careful what you say now. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. I was gonna say, you got this guy in Taiwan having a double standard, trying to nitpick anything he can. At... Where's my double standard? I just pointed him out. You know, this is the fucking stupidity from fucking this guy who fucking shit on the love team all the fucking time. Stupidity. Um, again, let me point out the stupidity. All right, you said that. Uh, you knew about Ezra Charles's resume. I asked you to come debate me on it between uh, Leonard and Ezra Charles. You declined because you said, quote, I don't debate on dead guys. Well, which is a cop out because to me, I knew from there you had no clue who the fuck Ezra Charles was. And you denied it and said, well, actually, I know who he was. So I asked you on the hangout with the librarian and said, OK, who did he beat? You couldn't answer the question. Talk about stupidity right there. A guy who says that he knows about boxing and he's watching sport, he knows about the history more than anyone else because... Or me particularly because he's older. He's 50 years old, right? But yet when I asked him simple, simple historical boxing questions, you could not answer. Wow. Talk about stupidity. Talk about the fact that Robinson didn't fight Tony Zell. Stupidity. <laughs> stupidity. All right. It's funny, though, because when somebody criticizes Golovkin in a constructive way, you call it hate. But when you do it to other fighters, you don't call it hate. You call it facts. When I say Gennady Golovkin has avoided fights, that's a fact. He did. He avoided Ward. It's a fact. He avoided Saunders to go after Canelo. It's a fact. 
Yes, it's not exactly a big blatant duck, but it is a duck. A duck is a duck, right? He avoided unification about to get a big money fight. That's a fact. But yet, it's called hate? That's called hate? Right? So a war does something like that? It's fact. It's not hate. Hmm, I see how that is. Let's continue. I'm a boxing librarian. You know, and then they say, I have a double standard. Yeah, you do. I've never said boxing, uh, Canadian glove was pound for pound. I never said yes, you did. Best yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. See, you're lying again because I still have that video up where you said this and I screenshot that comment. Stop lying to your view, your audience. You're known to do that. <laughs> of all time, I, I never said Well, that. you know what? Again, it goes back to this point. You're lying again. So you did say that Tony Zell, he was better than Tony Zell. One of the greatest middleweight fighters of all time. And Rocky Graziano, you did say that. Which is stupid from your part. Talk about stupidity. You're lying again. That he was going to fucking walk through Andre Ward to do any of these things. Never said it. So where is he? I never said you said that. I said others have said that. I know who said that. Not you. I never said you said that. So stop. See, you really, you really, you really, you are a very... You're a person of disarray, okay? <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Let's continue. The double standard that I'm fucking pushing. The screening ward. Why he won't do it for other fighters? Like exactly. Like looking at uh, a, a Klitschko, okay? Klitschko. Why are you bringing in Klitschko? Yeah, exactly Klitschko why I brought him in. Like ward dominated his fucking division. Yeah, he did, but he did fight Calvin Brock. He did fight I see Rock, but he did fight David Tua. Why in his early run as a heavyweight? Evander Holyfield, obviously, he did fight him, but yet. He did, in his latest years, as I repeated myself, he did fight Stavern, he did fight Wilder, he did fight Parker. So, again, to your standards, if you're going to criticize Ward for not fight Boutte and uh, Ward, um, and Stevenson, then why don't you criticize Klitschko for that? That's all. Again, it goes back to my point. I was looking for consistency from you. You claim you're consistent, so that's all I'm asking. But let me see if you can be consistent while you, uh, as we drag along this video. So let's see. For 10 years. Right. He didn't become undisputed because his brother was the other fucking champion. Yeah, I know that. Obviously, that was going to be a problem. We know that. And then Wilder ducked him and fucking him and his team both said they're not ready for that fight. Right. You know, we that, know that. That's the reality. Yeah, the reality is that Severn was a champion before Wilder got the title. As I mentioned earlier, why did he pursue Severn? He could have did it. He had the power. He had the clout, but he didn't pursue that fight. So, again, it's all about consistency. So. Please, I'm looking for consistency. Please hold Klitschko to the standard that you're holding toward. That's all I'm asking. So, there you go. But, like, I give Klitschko a pass. What are you talking about? I don't even fucking praise Klitschko. I don't make videos about Klitschko. I was never a Klitschko fan. Yeah, you were. Never. Yeah, you were. you attach those guys to me because they're both white. Right. No, nope. and, and that's what you're trying. To I do. never mentioned anything about tribalism, but you know what? But it again, see, this is all you do. You always have to always uh, relate. You always have to deflect to tribalism. That's what you always do. But you're, you can't help yourself because you're very obsessed about it, particularly about black men. I don't know what is this weirdest fetish about young black men that you have, and it's very creepy. <laughs> that I may add. All the LDBC's foolishness to you, and then you get bent out of shape, right? But that's the same fucking thing. You do. No, I don't. <laughs> I actually, you know, the thing is, I respect those guys, and I'm, you know, I like those guys. All right, those are my brothers. All right, do I agree with them? Ninety percent of the time, I do. Do I do I disagree with them? Absolutely. Ten percent of the time, I do disagree with it. I will come out and say I disagree with you. Okay, so there's the rationale with me. Okay, I disagree with them when they're wrong. I'll come out and say it. When they're right, I say, yeah, you're right. Okay, we're not perfect, but yet you don't have the heart to call anyone else out that you lie yourself to when they're wrong. You don't do that. So it is what it is. <laughs> and another thing I want to bring up is the fact that he keeps saying that uh, Ward didn't deserve to fight Golovkin because Ward didn't bring no money to the table. Yep. I never said Ward didn't deserve. Yeah, you did. <laughs> the word deserve never came out of my mouth. What I said is Golovkin didn't need to fight him. Why would he bother fighting him? Exactly. He was chasing bigger opportunities. Yeah, he was chasing bigger opportunities, but he didn't get those bigger opportunities, right? So he didn't get Cotto. He didn't get Canelo till two years, two, three years later, or two years later, right? He didn't get Martinez. He didn't get Froch. He didn't get Chavez Jr. So those are five guys, right? Obviously, he didn't get Mayweather because Mayweather retired after the Berto fight. He was trying to get that fight, but didn't retire. He retired, all right? 
Obviously, Pacquiao, we didn't know what he was going to do from there. So there's seven guys right there. Five of those guys he couldn't get. The other two were still lingering. Obviously, well, six, obviously. Manny Pacquiao was obviously, we didn't know what was going on with him. But anyways, uh, so those are six guys there, right? So who was left to fight? Oh, he decided to go after a unification bout with David Lemieux. All right, cool. Unification bout. That's fine. I got no problem with that. All right. All I said was, okay, why could he just enter agreement with war and say, okay, after we get through our interim fights, we'll meet eventually at a later date. It's happened all the time in boxing history. So what is the problem with that? It seems like you and others have a pro you have a problem with that. Okay. You said that war is, is not a big money fight. All right. Can you tell me that, um, can you honestly say? That David Lemieux was a much bigger money fight than, well, actually, it was a unification bout. Like I said, I'm not going to go there on David Lemieux. Dominic Way was a mandatory, right? So, okay, he got his mandatory out the way. Okay, so he, the mandatory is out of the way. Ward could have been there, right? Why could he fight Ward? In fact, when Ward, well, obviously, Ward was moving up, so yeah, it is what it is. But, anyways, the thing is, is that there could have been a deal that could have been made between the two. All right. They could have met. They could have had an interim fight between, but Golovkin did not want to do that. So it is what it is. So you're telling me that David Lemieux, honestly, David Lemieux, even though it's a unification bout, did he bring more money than, was he more valuable than Andre Ward? Can you honestly believe, can you honestly say that, that he was more of a valuable fight than Andre Ward? Can you honestly say that? No, he wasn't. He didn't bring more money than he didn't bring more to the table than Andre Ward. That's a fact. Come on, you can, if you if you really saying that that you're bullshit, okay? You're bullshitting because he didn't, okay? So yeah, so obviously David Lemieux unification bout, yeah, but obviously he was not. He didn't bring more to the table than Andre Ward. Yeah, he had the title, but other than that, we see what happened at pay per view bout, right? Yeah, they sold out the gate. Give Kolovkin credit for that, but the pay per views did bad. It was horrible. I'm not saying it would have been much better with Ward, but the fact is it probably could have done slightly better. But the fact is, is that it was bad when he headlined it. So you can't tell me that David Lemieux was more valuable than Andre Ward. No. Mm -mm. No, let's continue. Bigger money fights. I never shit on Frog when Frog didn't fight him. You and the boxing librarian, you, well, you're stealing from Well, you know what? Let me go back to Dominic Wade. I know that was a mandatory, but the fact is that Golovka could have gotten an exception to get that mandatory aside to get Ward in instead. So... Why could he do that? Why could he do that? Why could he push his man toward the side and just go ahead and, and get Golovkin instead? I mean, he didn't fight Ward. Why could he do that, huh? Uh, I know the IBF is very strict with their mandatories. I get that. But they do have rules with under the discretions that they can get some exceptions. They've done it in the past. All right. So let's continue. The boxing librarian who always pushes this as if, oh, well, the reason Frosh didn't fight him is because Golovkin didn't bring money to the table. So why did he have to fight him? Yeah, he didn't have to fight him. And I never said he had to. I never fucking went out making videos. You wanted that fight, though. On Froch because he didn't fight him. But you but did say Froj ducked him, right? See, it goes back to this fact that when fighters, you say that when fighters go pursue other fight, another fighter for a big opportunity to avoid another fighter, you don't call it a duck, right? You never said, you said you never said that Froj ducked on uh, Gennady Golovkin, right? But yet, two videos later, when you attacked Hatman, you did point out when you said that those guys, Sergio Martinez, Carl Froch, and others, Miguel Cotto, Canelo Alvarez at that point, ducked him. That's what you said. You said that, right? Because when I called you out on it and said, okay, if you're saying that what Golovkin did, when he was trying to pursue the other money, you know, when he was trying to do what he did is not ducking those guys. Like when he did what he did, when he was not ducking. When he did, when he passed up on the war fight, that's not ducking. When Carl Froch and others, you say that Carl Froch and others did not duck Gennady Golovkin, right? To your standards, right? You have no problem with fighters going out there, going for big money routes, right? To duck another fighter, as I call it, right? Then I asked you, is that, well, can you also say that Danny Jacobs, Peter Quillen, and uh, Billy Joe Saunders at that time, can you also say that they did not avoid Gennady Golovkin because the reason why they turned down those fights at that time is because they were looking for bigger opportunities, right? Can you say that now? You refuse to say it. <laughs> you see? You see where I'm going with this? You refuse to say it, but yet when you attacked Hatman, as I pointed out, you said that those guys ducked him. So, you know, you're all over the place, man. I understood why Golovkin and his team were chasing after Froch and Chavez. The same reason fucking Andre Ward was. Because they were far bigger names in the sport than Andre Ward. 
They brought far more money to the table. Yeah, in their own countries. Bigger names to challenge yourself with, right? That's the fact. Yeah. And Ward was doing the same thing Golovkin was doing. Yeah. Golovkin wasn't chasing him because he was chasing those guys and Canelo. He's gotten the fight. Yeah, that Canelo fight took two years. <laughs> as, as again, so within the two years, he could have fought Ward. He could have fought Ward within the year, but he didn't do it. So why the two-year gap? It took two years to get that done. <laughs> Let's continue. Canelo, which is a way bigger fight than Andre Ward. Yeah, exactly. But it took two years. But anyways, let's continue. Ward went up to, crew, to, to light heavyweight right. and fought Kovalev. Exactly. Guys- Something that Gennady Golovkin did not do. All right. When Abel Sanchez came out and said that, well, Golovkin could knock out light heavyweights. He could knock out cruiserweights. He even knocked out heavyweights in sparring. And right now, today, he could go up and fight and beat Ward, uh, Kovalev, and Stevenson. Yeah. When Abel Sanchez said that, right? Right? Well, Gennady, if if you believe your fighter, well, if you believe your fighter Gennady can do it, then take your ass up there and fight those guys. But, oh, you got a big problem with that. No, he shouldn't do that. But hey, when you called out fighters, well, if the trainer does it, obviously does it on the behalf of the fighter, then we're gonna take you up to that. We're gonna take you, we're gonna we're gonna take you to, we're gonna take heed to that for you, alright? So it is what it is. Still need to fucking always act like there's this thing between Ward and Golovkin. It is. Golovkin didn't need to fight Ward. Ward was a one sixty eight fighter before he retired. Well, let's say, let's put it this way. He didn't need to fight Ward, okay, he had options. I will say that. But the fact is it goes back to my point. When you call out a weight class, you call out all the best fighters in that division. When one of those fighters respond, like Andre Ward, oh, it's a problem. It's a problem. Well, you should tell what you should have criticized Golovkin for is that you and his team should not, him and his team should not open up their big fucking mouths, okay? If you had no attention to fight Andre Ward, don't call out a damn tired division, okay? Don't do that. It's very simple communications. Don't do that, okay? But yet, you have a problem when I attack when I criticize Golovkin for that, which is rightfully so. I should do that because you don't open up your mouth and say things like that and dismiss a guy who's just responding to your challenge. Don't do that, especially the top guy, and then say that he's got to fight a catchweight or no fight. You don't do that. Came back after his retirement and has never, ever, ever fought at 168 again. Of course not. So it's not likely that he would have even made that fucking weight. No. He's never made it since he came back. No. But you want to attach a double standard to me. What double standard? I pointed them all out. <laughs> I never said that Frosch had to fight Golovkin. Never. No. Well, you did want that fight. You was pushing for it. Of course, when Frosch elected to retire instead, of course, you and others were very disappointed. And some of you guys, not you, but I know, I think you did too. All right. But the fact is, your buddies were attacking Carl Frosch. We're calling him a coward. Call him all kind of pussies and shit when he retired because he refused to fight, you know, because he didn't fight Golovkin when he retired. Okay, there's a big consistency there. But the fact is, is that Carl Frotch didn't need to fight Gennady Golovkin. He didn't need that fight, okay? But you had a problem with it. I know you did. You may not have attacked Carl Frotch, but you definitely had a problem with him not fighting him, all right? But Carl Frotch could, you know, had, you know, had, you know, pretty much was looking for one last fight, all right? But you said that you had no problem with the with Golf Frost doing what he's doing, even though he could get that one last fight with Chavez Jr., right? You said you had no problem with him doing it, but yet, when Andre Ward decided to, wanted to get Tony Bell, you, you had a problem with it. <laughs> All right, it is what it is. But yeah, because Triple G was trying to pursue Frost, uh, you know, Frost Martinez, Cotto, uh, Chavez Jr., you name it, right? Because those guys are really bad. They love it. They love it. I love it when douchebag fucking asshole know it all like this fucking guy act like fucking he's been a boxing fan longer than other people. Yeah, he knows more than you. Fan before you were fucking born. Yeah, it's funny. You've been a boxing fan, but you didn't know who Sugar Ray Robinson fought. You could name one opponent on his resume when you had that hangout with me and the librarian. You could even name it on the spot. Jake LaMotta. Jake LaMotta is perhaps the, the the guy that stands out more on Robinson's resume than anyone else, like Bowman Olsen and Sammy Angott and Henry Armstrong and others, amongst many others that Robinson beat. Okay? You couldn't name Jake LaMotta, and you have the nerve to go after Mr. Doc, and you have the nerve to say that you've been watching boxing, you've been, stu- you've been knowing the sport longer than anyone else, and you couldn't name who Sugar Ray Robinson fought on that hangout? 
Or is it Charles who he fought? <laughs> Man, this is comical. Let's continue. So what the fuck are you talking about? These modern day boxing fans. Yep, you are. You know, this is fucking Boxing Doc or Mr. Doc, right? The same guy who fucking acts as if he's fucking this encyclopedia of boxing knowledge. He knows more than you. the guy that perpetuated this whole fucking bullshit that Marciano was fucking ducking. Listen. Yeah, the historical fact, you know, circle error on Mr. Doc. I pointed that out. But you have pointed out many historical er errors. And you know the fact that you don't know boxing boxing history very well. At one point, you said that if you're going to debate me, I don't want to talk about history on history and omics. That's what you dubbed it, right? And then here you are trying to lecture any, everyone about history. You're talking about history right now. Like you made a stupid ass comment. I got to repeat myself so that way my audience can understand. Those who are not tuning, you know, for those who want to tune in. Now, when you said that good eye Glufka is greater than Tony Zell. <laughs> I can't get over that. I, I really can't get over that. I mean, I'm really going to hit you on this one for a very long time. A very long time, all right? So don't go after Mr. Doc. You have no nerve. I bet you right now, I'll put money on it. If you and him were ever a debate, he will smoke the hell out of you in that debate. Hell, he will cream you in that debate if you ever go up against him. So let's continue. Right, and not just Liston. Also, uh, the other guy, fucking Liston destroyed. Uh, Floyd Patterson, Jordan. see? Exactly. You, could even, you didn't even know that Sonny Liston went through Floyd Patterson, huh? Shit, dumb ass. Let's continue. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But, you know, but he's going to talk about modern day boxing fans. I'm not a modern boxing day boxing fan. Yes, you are. boxing since the fucking 70s. Yeah, you still didn't know who Sugar Ray Robinson fought. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I bet you didn't know that Benny Briscoe beat Eddie Stoffel Muhammad. Right? Right. And if I forgot to mention that, so... Who did Golovkin that beat? They... Okay. Who did Willie Monroe beat that's uh, greater than what Benny Briscoe beat? Greater, uh, greater. Uh, who did he beat that was a greater win than uh, Benny Briscoe beat any of Stafford Muhammad? Hmm? Who did Matthew Macklin beat that was greater than Benny Briscoe beating Eddie Stafford Muhammad? Hmm? Who did Norhio Ishida beat that was greater than uh, Benny Briscoe beat Eddie Stafford Muhammad? Lawan Simon, who did he beat? Who did Kasi Uma beat that was greater than Biddy Briscoe beat Eddie Stafford Muhammad? I could go on and on and on. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue. The 70s. Longer than fucking... Rhetorical question, nobody. <laughs> anyway, let's go. And the man. Longer than Mr. Doc. Yep. Longer than fucking Boxing Library. Yep, but we know more about the history than you. We know about fighters that you don't know about. <laughs> let's continue. So get off your fucking high horse. I never fucking condescend boxing fans by putting out this kind of stupid fucking arrogant perception that, oh well, I'm an all-knowing boxing fan. <laughs> Not like you fucking casual fans, you know? What a bunch of fucking douchebags. This is consistently what they fucking talk about. Focus on the facts. I am. Or you haven't said one thing factual that I've ever said. Not yeah. one. Yeah, I did. So maybe you can focus on points that I've actually said. Yeah, you did. Let's see if you can. Go. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, exactly. Because first of all, before I, I continue, I dare you deny that you ever said that Tony's that uh, uh good good out of Golovkin is greater than Tony Zell. I dare you say that because you did say that in a couple videos ago, which you never uh, addressed. So it is what it is. I dare you say that. <laughs> And I dare you that you denied you ever said that you would never criticize Gennady Golovkin under any circumstances. I deny you that you ever. I dare you that you denied you said that. Okay. But well, anyway, let's continue. Situation. The reason why those guys he gives, he doesn't give them a pass for ducking Golovkin. Okay. The reason why they didn't fight Golovkin because you know why? Because Golovkin at the time didn't bring no money to the table. He was not a draw that they were looking for. Those guys, like Martinez, Foch, were in at the end of their careers. They were looking for big money fights, okay? So if you're not going to give those guys a pass for uh, avoiding Golovkin for financial reasons, but yet you give uh, uh, Golovkin a pass for avoiding Ward for financial reasons, you got to give Ward the benefit of the doubt, okay? You can't sit there and say that, well, I'm going to criticize those guys for avoiding my fighter, but I'm going to give my fighter a pass for avoiding this guy because he didn't bring no money. Allegedly. Before fucking Mr. 
dog fucking chimes in. I never attacked any of those guys for not fighting Golovkin. I stated the facts. People are critical of Golovkin's resume, but he was chasing the biggest names in boxing who didn't fight him because they chose to go after big money fights instead. Right. And, and even Froch chose to go into retirement afterwards, but continued to still talk about Golovkin and talk about how he beat him. Well, wrong. Well, actually, Golovkin, the only time Carl Froch ever talked about Gennady Golovkin when the name kept coming up when he was being interviewed. All right. At one point, Carl Froch got so frustrated about the, the name of Gennady Golovkin to the point that he's like, no, I don't want to talk about this guy, okay? Unless he goes fight somebody, then I'll talk about him, okay? So that's that's why I call Froch every time you know he would bring up Gennady Golovkin whenever he was asked about him. That's all Carl Froch did, okay? And even said, oh, I'll fight him at 172. So stop your bullshit. Show me one video, one comment where I shit over fucking... Sergio Martinez, Cotto, fucking Franch, any of those guys were not fighting Golovkin. Yeah, you did. You said they ducked him, right? Yeah, you, you went after those guys for ducking Golovkin, all right? You did. You may not did it in a very hostile way, but you did go after them for ducking him. You did give him a pass for doing it. That's what happened. You didn't do it. So stop sitting here and trying to deceive everyone and claim that you never you never gave them hell for that. You didn't give them a pass for doing it. All I'm saying is that if you're going to give them a, if you're going to not give if you're going to give Golovkin a pass for avoiding Andre Ward for financial reasons, give those guys a pass for the same thing for Golovkin. That's all I'm saying. Give them a pass. I want you to say that in your next video. Give them a pass. That's all I'm saying. All along, from the same perspective, from the same topic, I've been consistent, saying he's chasing the bigger fights. When people are so quick to shit all over his, and you to fucking spread false hope these guys. My guy, Martinello. Well, from east to west coast, he's making millions of dollars. What happens when, you know, it's going to say the longest he's been he wasted, he's been wasted Golovkin's prime. He wasted Golovkin's prime. Golovkin has been fighting on HBO in the U.S. for about four years, maybe five. Inside that time, he's moved up, became a fucking unified champion, put himself in position. Yeah, unified champion. Let's see. Uh, he uh, only won one belt in the ring. Uh, he was awarded two belts. One given to him by the WBC. The other one that was upgraded when he was an interim champion. He didn't fight the actual champion, Felix Stern, at that time, right? So, yeah, he's a unified champion, but he was awarded two belts, right? So, okay. Yeah, okay, well, let's continue. ...to get all those fights. Even if he'd been with a bigger promoter, he probably wouldn't have got those fights for the same reason. He wasn't a big name, he wouldn't have brought in big money, and he was too risky. So nothing's changed. Lofter fucking got him exactly where they wanted him. Right. Right? So that basically, he's a fucking guy who's selling pay-per-views. No, he's not, you idiot. No, he's not. Golovkin bombed two pay-per-views in a row when he headlined it. Let's not, let's not forget that. He did. He bombed it. And yet, yet we criticize Andre Ward for that, and rightfully so, because first of all, Andre Ward, I've said many times, he's not a pay-per-view fighter. I've said that on many occasions. He's not a crossover star. I said that it was a mistake for HBO to put his fight against Kovalev on pay-per-view. I said that on, on many occasions. I never went out and said that he was a pay-per-view star. And what's funny about that is that Golovkin is promoted more than Andre Ward. There's bigger financial backing behind him more than Andre Ward. And yet he still can't do numbers like Andre uh, can't do numbers. He can't even crack over 200,000 pay-per-view buys. Or better yet, he can't even crack over 180. He can sell out the gate. I'll give him that. But other than that, he can't even do, he can't even get over 200,000 pay-per-view buys. And yet he's a pay-per-view star? Hey, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Selling fucking well from east to west coast. He's making millions of dollars. Yep. And he's one of the top ten best fighters in the world. Yep. And he just got his super fight with Canelo. Is it super fight? Well, I mean, it was, well, I guess it is a super fight to some degree. But it's funny, though, because I haven't, what what, what happened? I didn't see the numbers come out for that fight yet. I, I'm still wondering why they haven't released it. I'm sure they did over maybe 600 buys. Thousand buys, I should say. I'm sure they did. It could be more, obviously, because that's Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> but you know, Canelo Golovkin contributes to that as well. But Canelo is the headliner, so let's let's not get it twisted. So it is what it is. Let's continue. A year later than people wanted it to be. Sure it is, but that's because Canelo, being the A side, being the money man, something Golovkin was never going to be, never, regardless of who fucking was representing him, because didn't have that huge Mexican fucking fan base to support him. No, no, that's how I did. 
is also the fact that Golovkin, uh, Canelo has a way, way better resume than Gennady Golovkin. That's factual. Canelo's fought way better opposition to Gennady Golovkin. He has a resume. He has a draw power that shows for it. So that's another reason why he's the A-side, okay? Canelo is a lineal champion, all right? That's another thing, all right? Even though the lineal champion, you know, sometimes my, some guys value that a lot, but I'm just contributing to that as well. I'm factoring that in, I'm factoring that in I should say, okay? So Canelo, again, He's a guy who had the drawing power, and not only that, but he had a big, way bigger resume than uh, than Gennady Golovkin. It's a fact. Okay, so let's continue. To put him in a position where he could pull the A side fucking attitude against his opponents, but you want to like shit on Loeffler? Like, give me a fucking break. And he, he should have said fuck Canelo to go fight Billy Joe Saunders. Exactly. So he could be undisputed. Some- yeah, he should have done that. Him and Golovkin should have done that. All right, see, there's a little bit of criticism there, but you didn't give them, you didn't go all the way in on that. Like, you're going after Ward for not giving Ward, to, to not making that uh, Donna Stevenson fight. So, again, I'm looking for some bit of more consistency from you. He should have done that. I agree there. But you didn't make a video criticizing for that. That's why I have this problem with you. You're not showing consistency when it comes to your criticism for certain fighters. I think we see that people... You know, gave Crawford so much credit for, but Crawford fucking didn't even defend it. He won it, dropped right. it in the garbage, and fucking moved on. Right. That shows you how much fucking he cared about it. Right. Truthfully. Right. God can still in a position where he can become undisputed. Right. But he's also making those big money fights that now and the man and. Well, before you go there, it is highly doubtful that he's going to go for that undisputed fight because. He owes Canelo Alvarez a rematch clause, and that could take one up to one year. And Golovkin may not be able to fight again until Canelo decides to invoke that rematch clause at a certain date. So he'll he'll, he'll be sitting out for a long time. Okay, if I were him, I'll get in the gym, I'll I'll stay in shape as long as I can until I get that you know until I'm ready for that fight, not slack off. Okay, but the thing about Golovkin is that he took a beating in that fight against Canelo Alvarez. He took so much punishment, and he won't be the same fighter when he goes in in his next fight. I'll tell you that right now. He's depleting, he's depleting, and I have a feeling that his punch resistance is going to start to become more diminished now. I don't think that chin is going to hold up much longer, so let's continue. This guy, Mr. Doc, defend guys like Raj, Cotto, Sergio Martinez, and other guys were taking instead of fighting him. Now he... He's doing the same thing. So why are you going to be critical of him when you gave those guys a fucking pass? Why? You know what's funny, Alex though? being a fucking hypocrite. No, it's funny, though, because uh, initially, I could say this. You know, stop. Shut up. Anyways, I could say this, right? And this is factual. Canelo Alvarez and Gennady and uh, Miguel Cotto offered Gennady Golovka to fight at catchweight 155 and 156. He turned it down. Right, he turned it down, rightfully so, because I don't think championship fights should be, should be defended at catch weights. I don't like that. But nonetheless, nonetheless, Golovkin shot himself in the foot because he said he'll go down to 154 and fight, um, fight uh, Mayweather and Cotto. I'm sorry, not Mayweather, Cotto, Mayweather and Pacquiao. So wait a minute, how could you turn out a catch weight fight against these two guys? But yet you want to sit there and say that, well. I'll go down to 154 only for those guys. How does that make any sense? Those two guys are just as big as names as Mayweather and Pacquiao. Obviously, many, May- Mayweather and Pacquiao are the bigger names, but those guys are just as big as they are too. So why could he do that for them? I'm just saying, but yet you didn't go after Golovkin for that. I'm just saying, where's your criticism? <laughs> but anyways, let me get this video up because it kind of died out on me. Oh, boy, 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 Sean Newton, Sean Newton boxing, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Gave Crawford so much credit for it, but Crawford fucking didn't even defend it. He right. won it, dropped it in the garbage, and fucking moved on. Right. That shows you how much fucking he cared about. It. 
speak English, fighting a foreign guy who didn't speak English, <laughs> right? Who both don't have fan bases. So he was going to have to work hard to build that fan base, regardless of how you want to fucking put it. I mean, when black American fighters who are represented <laughs> by Al Heyman and the PBC yep. can't become stars, guys like Thurman, Spence, Deontay Wilder, right? They're, they don't sell more than Golovkin. You know, they're not bigger draws right. or fucking, you know, more revered fighters than Golovkin. They're not. Are you going to criticize their management and promotional team? Well, I did. Well, you wouldn't. I did. The LDBC would jump all over your ass, right, Mr. Doc? But, okay, keep going. Well, you know, because everybody called me a hater because they weren't, they weren't really, they they did a good job to some degree. I'll give them credit for bringing up Golovkin the way they promoted him. But there were some things they were doing wrong, okay, how they approached certain fights. When they first made that call out for 154 to 175, that's when they shot themselves in the foot, okay? Because when they did that, Andre Ward, Arizona Delar, and some other fighters had responded to that challenge. When those two guys responded, oh, it was okay to avoid those guys because they brought nothing to the table, right? Yeah. But yeah, when he said 154, yeah, but when he said 154, oh, he's meaning he won't. This guy went ballistic. He called me a liar. The guy in Taiwan said, that's not true. The glove can never call out Pacquiao. Well, actually, he did. That's what he did. Yeah. No, he was asked to fucking comment. When you're asked a question, of course he would say the same thing he said about Floyd. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I think I addressed this earlier in the video, but I'm going to address it again. So, when a fighter is asked about who do you want to fight next, and then this particular fighter says, well, this fighter A says that, well, oh, I got to borrow this one strictly boxing news. This is his terminology. So, fighter A says that, well, I want to fight fighter B. That's not a call out. Are you serious? So when Chad Dawson was asked about who did he want to fight next in the post fight interview, he said that I want to fight Andre Ward next. That's not a call out. Are you serious? <laughs> well, if that's not a call out, you tell me what is. But yet you're actually trying to explain it, which is kind of stupid, by the way. But it is. Uh, but let's continue. Of course, I'd fight those guys. They're the biggest names in the sport. Those would be great fucking names to get on my resume. And yes, I would go down to 150. Really? So uh, when Gennady Golovkin says that, no, nah, I don't want to fight Kell Brook. He's too small for me, right? And then he turns around and says, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the book fight instead. I'm going to fight Brook. So how does that make any sense? How, how can you say that he's supposed to say that he's going to fight those guys because they're bigger names? Well, is it Kell Brook a big name in the UK as you claim he is? Why can he immediately say that I'll fight Kell Brook? <laughs> well, we all know that Kell Brook is not that big of a name in the UK, but, you know, he is no. So, again, you claim he's a big name. So, uh, yeah, I don't understand. How could you say that Golovkin was supposed to say that he'll fight those guys because they're big names? But yet Golovkin never said immediately that he'll fight Kell Brook and then turn around. So shocked as all that he actually was going to fight him. But it is what it is. But let's continue. Before to fight them. So no one can hate him for doing that. Why not? Ward said he Why not? Because you and your buddies chastised um, you and others chastised Hawkins and Haggis for fight small, big small guys like Trinidad, um, De La Hoya, and uh, well, Hawkins, by the way, and Trash Hagler for fighting um, Leonard Hearns and Durant. So if you're saying that um, if you guys were chast chastising them, then why can't we chastise um, uh, Golovkin for doing the same thing? Be consistent. I won't do it because I, like I said, I respect the, the historical fact that great small guys have moved up the fight middleweights. This happened in the past, so I'm not going to degrade Golovkin for that. But it's also fair to say that if you know if you guys are going to degrade Hawkins and Haggers for doing that, as I got to repeat myself, then others have a right to degrade Hop, um, Goodnight Golovkin for doing the same thing. So it is what it is. He would fight Floyd Mayweather. Fucking Bernard Hopkins said he would fight Floyd Mayweather. I knew that. So why wouldn't Golovkin say the same thing? But did he actively go searching out those fights? He did. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. He didn't actively search out a fight yes, with he did. Pacquiao. He didn't yes, actively he did. search out a fight. Stop. Shut up. Let me tell you why. Because ever since that that, that, nah, that May 2015 Maypac fight happened, Golovkin was taunting Floyd after, um, after his retirement, after the Roberto fight. He was taunting him. He was daring him to come out of retirement and to fight him. That's what he said, okay? He was taunting him through social media, through various interviews, as far as Pacquiao's concerned, right? They were pursuing that fight as well. 
when Bob Aaron said that we would try, we would look forward to making a, uh, a Golovkin fight if Manny Pacquiao looks good against, uh, who was it, Jesse Vargas, I believe? Yeah, it was against Jesse Vargas, right? Golovkin's team responded. They said, oh, really? Really? If he's serious, then we'll, 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 we'll jump on it. We'll jump on it. We'll make the fight at 154. But it's not from the, oh, it was long before that. Golovkin has said it on numerous times that he will want, he won't fight Manny Pacquiao. He said it on three different occasions. He did say it. He they were trying to pursue that fight. Okay, so don't sit there and say that they weren't trying to pursue that fight when they when he called them out. Yes, they want that fight. Well, they well, I mean Golovkin team wanted that fight. They wanted Mayweather. They wanted those guys in the ring desperately. So that's why they said that when they initially made that call out from 154 to 168. They really meant that they wanted to fight those guys at 154, not the other 154 pound guys, which is a dumb thing to say, but that's what they wanted. So let's continue. With Floyd, Pacquiao and him, there was really never a buildup because Pacquiao never mentioned him and he fucking only responded. Of course, Pacquiao never mentioned him. Know why? Because Pacquiao never heard of him. <laughs> Even when they had that photo op together, Pacquiao didn't know who the guy was. So that goes to show that Golovkin is a so-called big pay-per-view star. He's a so big crossover star, right? It is what it is. <laughs> to media questions directed to him, Floyd continues to mention him even right? today. Yeah, why? Just because Floyd's always been bringing his name up. Why? Well, now, now let me take that back. Why? As I said before, whenever they inter when someone interviewed Floyd, Gennady Golovkin name always keep bring it keep coming up the reporters and the writers keep asking him questions about Golovkin and Floyd gives out his opinion that's the only time he ever talks about Golovkin that's the only time he talks about him so stop lying to people but after this Canelo fight Floyd still talked about him so Floyd uses his name as much as he uses his name actually more really so what are you talking about really Really? Floyd really does that? You say that Floyd really needs to use Golovkin's name to build his popularity? Is that what you're fucking saying? This is the most dumbest thing I've ever heard. Floyd doesn't need to know, mention that guy's name for anything. If anything, Golovkin was mentioning his name as much as he can. You know why? Because Golovkin was building his profile. The only way he could do that is to taunt the biggest name in boxing at that time. One of the biggest names, I should say. To taunt him, or probably people will argue is the biggest at that point. He needs to mention Floyd more than Floyd needs to mention him. So stop sitting there and act like Golovkin was a bigger star than Floyd Mayweather. Stop saying, stop, don't insinuate that. That's bullshit. Let's continue. About, right? You know, yeah, the reason he didn't fight Laura and Ward is because why would you? Neither of them brought anything to the table. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because Edwin Rodriguez got a million dollar payday well obviously he got duck 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 did what 100 200 200,000 grand because he didn't make the way for the fight he got a million dollar pay for fighting ward and he was a nobody so how could you say that Ward didn't bring no money to fights kovalev at that point got his biggest payday when he fought andre ward the first fight actually his biggest guaranteed paycheck so how could you say that, he, that andre ward doesn't bring no money obviously he does because adonis stevenson wanted that fight <laughs> all right as far as Arizona de Lara, yeah, obviously we understand that. But the fact is, yes, our Arizona de Lara, yeah, he does. He needs to build more of his profile a bit more. But the fact is, is that Golovkin called out that division. I have to repeat myself. You don't call out other weight classes if you don't have no intentions of fighting those other fighters. Just call out those specific fighters. It's that simple. Don't call out three different divisions. They didn't want to move the goalpost when those other fighters respond. All right. But if you want to get on Arizona Delar, you cannot tell me that Willie Monroe was more suitable than Arizona Delar. You can't tell me that Dominic Wade was more suitable than Arizona Delar, even though that was a mandatory. All right. You cannot tell us that. That's bullshit. OK. If anything, Arizona Delar would be more formidable than fucking Willie Monroe. More formidable challenge than Marco Antonio Rubio. Come on. Don't kid yourself. Let's continue. And you think that that hurts his brand because Lawler didn't make him go after that. Uh, Laura, who has a fucking ugly ass style that's hard to look good against. Yep. And fucking Ward, who's bigger and has an ugly ass style that's hard to look good against. Ah, you just admitted why you didn't want to see those fights. You know why? You just now admitted that those two guys could beat uh, Gennady Golovkin. You know that. And that's why you don't want that fight. That's the reason why you campaign so hard to not get those fights ha be made.
<laughs> you just can see the truth right there by making that statement. Well, hey, hey, it is. <laughs> right? Neither sells a pay per view. Neither is a big draw. Well, neither is Golovkin on pay per view. As I stated, he can draw the gate, no question about it, but he's not a crossover pay per view star either. <laughs> so let's continue. But hey, you know what? To be fair, though, now he got fought Canelo. Maybe that could change. Who knows? Mm, I don't know. I mean, it didn't change for Liam Smith. It didn't change for Alfredo Angulo, obviously. So it obviously didn't change for Lara. <laughs> so obviously, I don't think. I mean, it's a possibility that him fighting Canelo Alvarez, uh, fighting Canelo Alvarez, and make him a crossover star. So um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but. Obviously, I don't know because obviously he's not going to fight anyone else but the Canelo rematch until next year, which it looks like at this point. So, well, let's continue. Look at who fucking Laura's fighting. <laughs> Pathetic. But yeah. you continue to fucking put his name out there like they ducked and ducked. Yeah, I criticized Laura for that fight against Agasha. I don't like that fucking fight. I went on the live hangouts on two multiple hangouts, three of them, cl- uh, slamming Laura for doing that. I can't defend him no more on that. He's got to step it up at this point. He's talking about unifying. Then stop talking and make his, you know bring action. You see? There's me being objective. I like Arizona Lara, but I'm objective. I'm not giving him a pass for this. I could do that, but you you can't do that to Golovkin because you're cowardly. All right, you've openly admit that you won't you won't criticize your favorite fighter no matter what the circumstances are. You open you're a fucking fanboy and you don't like it when people call you that. So it is what it is. Watch him. But we know why they didn't fight those guys because it wasn't fucking point. It, it wasn't. Yeah, Useful it was a dangerous fight. Forward. It was a dangerous Fighting fight. Them. You know, it's funny, though, because you and others call Gennady Golovkin the most fear fighter in the world, right, at that point. A guy who's willing to take on any, any uh, take on all the challenges, right? There were two challenges right there, but he didn't take it. You guys came up with every excuse. You come up with every excuse in the book to not to say why those fights shouldn't happen. What happened to the killer? What happened to this the most fear guy in the world? The guy who had a fiercer reputation in, reputation in Eastern Europe during his amateur days. Huh? What happened to that? But oh, when these two guys come up, oh no, 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 no. We gotta scale back from that. We gotta move the goalposts. Yeah, exactly. 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 You know goddamn well those are dangerous fights, and that's why you didn't want to push those fights to be made. So let's continue. Those guys wouldn't have helped fucking move the mark on the on, on the on the thing, the speedometer at all. Yeah, whatever. But continue to say how I'm a hypocrite. Why? Yeah, you are. I mean, I said the same thing. No, you I haven't. I said Froch had to fight Golovkin. <laughs> you wanted to make that fight. And he said on a fucking interview, a fight out, you dumb fuck. Okay? Yeah, an interview, you dumb fuck, where they asked him a question and he... Yeah, was- you idiot. You Now you're telling me that when a fighter asks you that who do you want to fight next, you don't say that's a call out. <laughs> wow wow talk about being a fucking idiotic guy all right let's talk about stupidity right there let's continue responded to it so in one interview they asked him a question because flight hype is a floyd mayweather fucking pandering website so it's not a surprise they brought up that question he responded that yeah of course he would be ex- interested in fighting him yep Everybody so the boxing scene is interested so that bloody elbow they all asked him the same Everybody. questions in three separate so interviews why does golovkin get hated because his team puts out comments to try to build interest in him, try to get the fights with those big names, the same as everybody else, but then he's called... Well, a- here's the thing. We got no problem with that. The problem is, is that, again, it goes back to the point that you criticize other great middleweights to propagate him uh, for fighting smaller guys, but yet when he tries to do it, it's no problem. So, again, it goes back to the consistency as you claim you have. So, be consistent. Don't criticize past middleweights for doing what Golovkin is trying to do which is nothing new. So don't do that. Don't get upset when I, or I say I, but many other, well, hold Golovkin to, uh, you know, to a standard of being a hypocrite, and you are. Don't get upset when we're doing it, but yet when you do it to other fighters from the past, it's no problem. So don't do that. Ducker and the Dodger, because he's not fighting the guys that aren't those names. When he's trying to get those names. This is another double standard, but he won't criticize Golovkin for calling out small guys, right? When he criticized, he didn't call those guys out. You are a dumb motherfucker. (laughs) You a dumb motherfucker. I swear to God, if somebody asks you a question of who do you want to fight next, and I got to keep repeating my third for the third time. When a, when a fighter, when someone called, when a, a reporter or a writer asked fighter A, who do you want to fight next? 
Fighter A says, I want to fight Fighter B and C and D. How is that not a call out? Oh, Jesus Christ. What are you talking about? Oh, man, you in low you place. Know, this is the fucking difference <laughs> with you and me. I fucking speak truth. You speak fucking lies. Oop, I'm sorry. What happened there? What happened there? Let me bring this up. Let's see. Let's see. What happened there? All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. Ooh. Joseph Parker beat Huey for your majority decision. All right, congratulations to Joseph Parker, man. I'm going to do a video on that later. Fucking lies and fucking bullshit. Golovkin never fucking called out Floyd Mayweather yes, he did. or Pacquiao. Yes, he did. Did he respond to media fucking questions directed at those fighters? Yes. Of course. That's a call out, right? dummy. <laughs> but it's not like he was chasing after those fighters. Oh, yes, he, he has. I just said a second ago. He's taunted Floyd through social media, through various interviews ever since he's retired. Okay. He's also mentioned, or his or his team, or his, by the way, they said they will take the fight if uh, Bob Aaron was serious about it. We'll pursue it. In fact, they were talking about that prior to that. Even after that fight I interviewed, they were still talking about it. We'll make, we can make 154 for Pacquiao. We'll make it happen. Okay? We'll make it happen. Of course, Bob Heron came out and said that. Well, I was joking because there's no way the commission would approve it. It's kind of funny that Bob Heron would say that because the commission approved Pacquiao for fighting Antonio Margarito. So, obviously, I'm not saying Antonio Margarito is, is, is on a, a skill, is on a level of Gennady Golovkin, but... I'm saying that he was a way bigger guy and he fought Manny Pacquiao and Manny Pacquiao destroyed him. So yeah, it's kind of funny there when Bob Marin says that. But again, yeah, he was pursuing those guys. He wanted those fights. All right. There's no question about it. He wanted them. You know, you guys want to fucking focus on all this bullshit. He just fought Canelo. Focus on that as opposed to this old news bullshit that has nothing to do with present day. Yes, it does. The reason why I bring it up because you're being a hypocrite for the same reason you're attacking Ward for the same reason that you're giving these guys pass for doing like Lufkin and others. That's the reason why it's relevant to bring it up. Yet yeah, you're a guy who says that don't bring up past stuff, but yet you go into history to attack other fighters to attack other fighters that you don't like. You see the hypocrisy there? <laughs> I'm not being a hypocrite. Yeah, this is the same thing fucking all along. And I said the same thing about no, everybody. No, you didn't. Just Golovkin. Hagler and Hawkins for fighting small men. Went through the resume. I never shit on them for fighting you, smaller men. Yes, but you did. Here you are pushing out false bullshit again. All right, let me go back to that conversation when I stated that video. All right, in this video earlier, okay? You went through, you made a video. Of, uh, let me see. Hagler versus Triple G, right? You went through Hagler's every single opponent. You went through Benny Briscoe, you went through Vito Arafomo, you went to Alan Mentor, Sugar Ray Sales, you went through all of them, Willie Monroe and many others, and Juan Roldan. All right? You went through them and said that they weren't elite cop, uh, fighters. You said Benny Briscoe was a club fighter. Benny Briscoe, a club fighter. Okay, a guy who's rated ta a top 10 middleweight for the last, what, 12 years? All right? As I stated earlier in this video, name one fighter that who Golovkin beat that's better than Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, the same guy that Benny Briscoe beat. Name one guy who's better than any of Mustafa Muhammad. You can't. There's nobody. Nobody on that resume. All right? Vito Arofomo. Who did Golovkin beat that was better than Vito Arofomo? Nobody. Alimenter? Nobody. So don't, don't sit there and say that you weren't going through the resumes and trying to call everybody a club fighter, this and that, and third. They weren't elite. They weren't great. All of this stuff. Yeah, they were very good fighters, but let's be honest. Those fighters were way better than the fighters that Golovkin fought before he finally fought, stepped up the competition. You did do that. And you also said that fighting welterweights is not going to count when at the same time when I told you a while back that, okay, we, we might as well take off the 154-pound guys that Golovkin fought. And same thing with Librarian told you. And you see where Golovkin's resume looked like at that point. But no, you couldn't do that. I said they didn't become superstars until they fought these two elite smaller men. Making the comparison that <laughs> in this point of Golovkin's career, he's in a position where he could do. No, there's no comparison there. Those guys fought way better opposition than Golovkin fought before he fought Kell Brook of all people. By the way, Kell Brook, who didn't do much at Welterweight either. All right. Didn't do much either. But yeah, Kell Brook was able to give Golovkin hell in the first five rounds. All right.
<laughs> All right. Okay, let's continue. Ultimately, the same fucking thing. It's not. Right? Which is he, which is what he's doing by fighting Canelo, which is very similar. He didn't win that now, fight. We say Canelo was... Guess what? Dead. Guess what? There's no similarity. You know why? In his biggest fight of his career, he didn't win. But guess who won their biggest fights in their career? Hawkins did. He beat Felix Trinidad. Marvin Hagler. He beat Roberto Duran. So there is no comparison. So how can you sit there and say they're comparable? <laughs> let's get let's keep it moving. Ed and Hearns and Duran. No, we wouldn't say that right now. But his- oh, furthermore, I gotta say this: that uh, those two guys didn't take a beating in their big money in their in their uh, big high high profile fights compared to Gennady Golovkin. So again, where's the comparison? There's no comparison there. <laughs> career is also not finished so potentially who knows what's going to happen with his name at the end of it right it could be that name from smaller weights that skyrockets fucking Golovkin's uh you know status into pound for pound you know TDE type of status well but I never said any criticism towards Hagler and Behoff for fighting them I said those were their best names on his resume all right now since you're saying that I've asked you many times to concede to us that Gennady Golovkin is not greater than those guys. You wouldn't do it. Then when I finally got you to admit it, you did it. Now you're going back and saying, well, they're not. They're the same. Oh, I forgot to mention. Who who did Golovkin beat that was better than Willie Monroe Sr.? The same guy that beat Marvin Hagler early in his career. Who? Rhetorical question. There's nobody. <laughs> there's nobody he beat that's better than Willie Monroe Sr. Nobody. So let's go ahead and continue. When fucking Hagler... Yeah, and uh, uh, before we get to that point, who did Golovkin beat that's better than Lupe Aquino? Mm, yeah, tough question. Nobody. Huh? How about John David Jackson? Nobody. Glenn Johnson? Nobody. Uh, William Joppy? Nobody. So, come on, Keith Holmes? Nobody. So how, again, goes back to this comparison point, how are they comparable? Again, these guys, Hawkins and Hagler fought way better competition than Golovkin has before they got their big fights. How is that even comparable? The dude, don't shoot yourself in the foot. Let me continue here. Fought Durant, a lightweight. Yeah. Terrence and Sugar Ray Leonard, those were the three best names on his resume. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, exactly. That's universally recognized. Yes. Tell me I'm wrong. No, you're not. When fucking Beehop fought Tito Trinidad yeah. and De La Hoya. Mm-hmm. Those were the two best names on his resume. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, they I'm won those fights. I'm those guys for fighting them. Why? Yeah, give them credit. All I'm asking you is give them credit. Give them credit for those wins. And concede, again, I'm going to ask you again. I want you to make a video saying that, yes, those guys are better than um, um, Gennady Golovkin. They are better. They have a better resume before Golovkin got his big fight and after he got his big fight, which is a fact. And Golovkin didn't even win the biggest fight of his career. He lost. Well, he didn't lose. He drew. He didn't win that fight. And he got his ass. He fucking took a beating in there. So <laughs> let's continue on this. And wouldn't he fight them? They were trying to become superstars. So they wanted to fight superstars. The same thing I said about Golovkin. I've been consistent. But no, you're, you're not. twisting the facts. I'm not. To act like I'm hating on fucking these guys. Yeah, you pushing are. Pushing out the same retarded bullshit that Boxing Librarian says. You two just quote the same fucking stuff. You quote each other. No. Quoting me. Which is never me fucking actually saying any of these things. Right. Yeah, you did. This is how fucking stupid you are. Do you actually listen to my videos? Ah, uh, stupid. Ah, uh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Uh, kid, you know, you claim you know about boxing history, but you didn't know who Sugar Ray Robinson fought. I, I gotta go through this again. I, I, I have to. You didn't know who Sugar Ray Robinson fought. You didn't know that Sugar Ray Robinson did not fight Tony Zale. You said that Gennady Golovkin is greater than Tony Zale and Rocky Graziano. All right. And you said that in the 1900s, Jack, there was a variety of styles when it came to boxing back there. Clearly, it wasn't, you fucking idiot. So let's continue. <laughs> you just continue to comment on them without actually listening. I am listening to you. They say that these guys can't stack up to Golovkin's level because Golovkin did fight small men. I never fucking said that. Yes, you did. Show me the one comment, one video where I said... Hopkins and Hagler cannot stack up to Golovkin because Golovkin never smart, never fought smaller men. Yeah, you did. When we interacted, like I said, when we interacted about almost two years ago, you said that, well, Hopkins and Hagler fought their best wins against welterweight, so that doesn't count. So let's, we got to exclude them. Really? 
If you're going to exclude them, this is what you did on the hangout with the librarian again. I have to repeat myself. You tried that angle again on that hangout. When the librarian called you out on that and said that's not fair, you can't do that because, first of all, when Hagler and Hawkins fought those guys, they were middleweights. They were no longer small guys. They were middleweights. So you cannot, they're on their resumes. You cannot do that. But if you are going to do that, you got to take off the small guys that Golovkin fought. Yoshida, Adama, Uma, uh, uh, Rosado, Macklin, and others. It, obviously, now you can take off Brooke. We want to see Brooke that night at that time. Well, you can say Brooke, whatever, right? Take those guys off and see what Golovkin's resume look like. That's fair since you want to go that route. But you had a problem with that. But yeah, you did. But when Golovkin decided, did, did take that fight with Chris, uh, not Chris Eubank, with Kell Brook, you did a complete 180. A complete 180. And say, you know what? It's all right because middleweights have welterweights. That's exactly what I told you. But you didn't want to listen to that argument. Exactly what I told you a while back. But then you have to use that angle, the same argument I told you just to defend Golovkin. Unbelievable. When they others criticized Golovkin for pulling a fucking 180, and you know, when he, while he you know, criticized Golovkin, I mean, Canelo for doing the same thing. You're ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah, 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 you're drunk. Bullshit, he did. He a lot of small guys. Come up and wait. But he don't criticize Golovkin for that. He didn't. I didn't criticize those guys for it. So why would I fucking criticize Golovkin? Yeah, he did. Stop no. lying, you did. But when Golovkin did a 180, called up. Parkell Brook, where he chastised Canelo for fighting a small guy because that's a business decision. That's something he would never do. What Golovkin said, he went around and did the same fucking thing. He did. But now you're ignoring the facts. They no, I'm not. Chased after Kell Brook. That wasn't the. Ah, uh, it's not about who who he's chasing after or who he was not chasing after. Again, when he was asked about Kell Brook, about the call out by Kell Brook, Golovkin said in his own words, "Kell Brook is too small for me. I'm not going to take that fight." And then when Canelo announced that he was fighting Amir Khan, he took his ass over to Power 106 and said, and I'll let you continue. I know. He said that I will never make a business decision like that, even though he's been a hypocrite because he wanted to fight small guys like Mayweather back yeah, right? So that is the big, the biggest um, core, the core point that we have to focus on here. This is what he said in his own words. He turns around and fights Killbrook. Oh, yeah, I know you're going to bring up the Chris Eubank situation, but which is kind of funny. But let me continue and let you say what you have to say They about were that. going after, unlike Canelo, going after uh, a 147 guy who was never a champion at 147. You know, it's funny, though. He wasn't. But, you know, what? to think about this, Amir Khan actually was far more accomplished than uh, Kell Brook. <laughs> it's a fact. Kell Brook, he's won more titles than Kell Brook. He's had more title wins and fights than Kell Brook. He's beaten better oppositions than Kell Brook. Even though he did win a title at 147. He did that. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. So it is what it is. Let's continue. And fucking had been knocked out several fights in a row. Exactly. You know, they were chasing Eubank. A middleweight. Right. Top middleweight. Top middleweight. Who was like, yeah, but he was not a very big, big, big name, right? Yeah, Eubank may be somewhat known in, over there in the UK, but he's not a really, really big name. So, again, it goes back to my point. How's a Eubank fight even more credible than, um, you know, maybe Arizona Lar or Jay Zagel? Jay Zagel is more popular than Chris Eubank. Goes back to my point. Represented by Matru. By yeah. Hearn. Yeah. They formed this. They went to the UK. They organized this big thing at the O2 Arena. Right. They needed a matchroom fighter to fill in that card. Yeah, it gets to that point because it happened in 24 hours, which is kind of strange because once a fighter pulls out of the negotiation process and pulls out the fight, whatever the case may be, it doesn't take 24 hours to put in somebody else. That's totally unheard of. And Tio Garcia, um, God rest his soul, RIP Tio Garcia brought up a good point about this because... They had perhaps negotiated this uh, behind closed door long before the kill Chris Eubank situation fell apart. They probably, they negotiated this as a contingency uh, option just in case Chris Eubank fight was not going to happen. So they had agreed to terms before this whole thing blew over. And that's why that Kel Brook fight got penciled in within 24 hours. That had to be because there's no way in hell you could get a fight approved like that with 24 hours. You got to go through the TV, the TV networks. You got to negotiate the split. You got to negotiate the uh, TV rights. You got to get the lawyers involved. They got to look over the contracts. That takes weeks, weeks, if not months. But yet they got it done in 24 hours. 
Well, if it's a last minute fill-in, it could take at least a week or two. But the fact is, a guy like Kell Brook just decided he go ahead and sign off on it in 24 hours after Eubank drop off. That is quite strange right there. And I'm surprised you didn't even question that. But anyways, besides the point, there was many other fighters available. Eddie Hurt could have got James DeGale. He could have got him in there. I'm not sure that James DeGale was still with him at the time. But still, though, the fact is that if, if not, if that's the case, then that card could have been canceled. They could have fought. If they were concerned about getting a UK fighter, they could have fought James DeGale. They could have got that fight. James Gio was available. Arizona Delar was available, but they didn't take that fight. They took the welterweight instead. They thought it was going to be a cake and a walk. Why did they think there was going to be a uh, cake walk? Because they were already talking about their next opponents even before the Kell Brook fight was coming about. They were looking past Kell Brook, which is a bad, bad mistake to do. It all, they almost paid for it too because Kell Brook batted Golovkin in that fight, whether you you know whether you like it or not. That happened. That happened, and you had a hard time coming to that realization. You had a hard time accepting the fact that your fighter has a lot of limitations, a lot of them, but you couldn't accept that. <laughs> and by the way, you were the guy that said it was going to be a great fight, but yet when Kell Brook actually proved everyone wrong and did give a good fight, you could even admit that Kell Brook batted Golovkin the way he did. You could even admit that. So <laughs> it's kind of strange right there. But anyways, let's continue. Or else the whole card would have fucking fell through and he would have just went to New York to fight somebody. So of course, Hearn got an opponent to fill that position. Right, which, which is was strange. The welterweight champion. Yeah. He had never been beat. Yeah. He never been knocked out. Yeah, he never been beat, but his greatest win on his record is against Sean Porter, who had two terrible, you know, mandatory defenses, right? And one terrible voluntary defense, right? And before that, his greatest opposite greatest opponent was against Carson Jones in the second fight he almost got knocked out in. And Shashenko, a guy who's, you know, overrated welterweight, a guy who wasn't a great champion, by the way, who hurt him in that fight. So yeah, Kell Brook. Kell Brook, the great Kell Brook, right? <laughs> okay. And yet, you had the nerve to say that that fight was comparable to Leonard and, uh, and Hagler, right? Oh, no, no, no. You said that th that fight was comparable to Marlon Starlin and Michael Nunn. <laughs> what the fuck? Mar Mar what? Marlon Starlin and Michael Nunn? Marlon Starlin? You tell me that Kell Brook is comparable to, comparable to Marlon Starlin? Marlon Starlin was a unified welterweight champion of the world, a lineal champion. He beat a lot of names in that division, okay? A lot of names. Simon Brown, the guy that you like to discredit a lot in his prime. Floyd Mayweather, no, not Floyd Mayweather. Lupe Aquino in his prime. Yeah, he lost to Donald Curry for the undisputed um, uh, welterweight title, okay? Mark Breland, Lloyd Hannigan took his titles away from him, whatnot. All those, come on, dude. Moved up to fight Michael Nunn. Two-way classes. It gave Michael Nunn hell in those two fights. And so in that fight. And some people felt that Marlon Starling won that fight. So how the hell could you sit there and compare Kell Brook uh, to Gennady Golovkin? Kell Brook to Marlon Starling. That's fucking crazy. And better yet, compare, compare Gennady Golovkin to Michael Nunn? Please. Please, man. Let's continue. <laughs> Kell Brook. And I didn't fucking act as if that was some great win and some yes, great did. fight that he was in. Yes, you no. did. Yes, you but did. Stop lying. Yes, you did. Are different. You They're made a different. video saying that was going to be a very good fight, as I just said a second ago. You did. And then when good luck, when, again, when Kell Brook did give good luck in hell, you refused to accept the fact that he did give him hell. But anyways, let's continue. But you ignore that because you're trying to act like I'm hating guys for fighting smaller guys. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. And even fucking Canelo, go watch the videos. Unlike many people like yourself and other people, I didn't shit on Canelo for doing that. I, I stated yeah. the fact. I understand why he's doing it. Colin and Canelo sells a pay-per-view. He fights twice a year on Mexican holidays. He needs names to sell pay-per-views, right? Go watch the videos. Show how I'm contradicting myself. Yeah, I you are. Unlike you and everybody else, I didn't shit all over Canelo for fighting Khan. Really? Right. When I asked you to give Canelo credit for that win, you refused to do it. <laughs> you refused to give him credit for that win. So I was like, okay, give him credit for that win. Just like you give Kalefka credit for that win against Kell Brook. Give him credit. You refused to do it. Talk about not being a hypocrite and a contradictory person, right? Let's continue. I can say that fucking honestly because I made the videos to prove it. Yeah, whatever. No, you didn't. No, no, no. It was worse than. 
Well, if you turned around and said that, or would have turned around and did that, almost like barely, it seemed like a few days at most after he did an interview where he made a big point about saying Canelo fighting Khan was disrespectful to the sport. Yep. Exactly. He did say that. Those are exact words. The interview's up on Power 106. That's, a, that's Golovkin saying stuff, but that's nothing to do with me. That's nothing to do with what I said. Radio station that gave. No, that has nothing to do with what you said, but you didn't criticize him for that. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> that interview. Exactly. Well, Frankenstein, you're the stupidest motherfucker. I'm sorry. Frankenstein, Golovkin didn't call out Kel Brook. Okay, yeah, he didn't call out Kel Brook. Man. But you know what Golovkin said? He said he would not fight Kell Brook at one time because Kell Brook was too small. And then he took his ass on the radio station of Power 106 in L.A. where I said he wouldn't fight any welterweight. That's what he said. That's not true because he fucking said all along, like you just made in a video, that he would fight fucking Floyd Mayweather. I just said that, dummy. Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, I said so that, stupid. you're contradicting yourself. I did contradict myself. I did say that, well, you stupid fuck. We all know. Hold on, shut up, shut up. I did say that, you stupid fuck. Listen to the whole video. I don't think you're going to play it, but let's see. He said in interviews that he would love to fight Floyd, that that was his dream to fight Floyd, right? And you use that to shit on him and hate on him, right? And now you're reversing it. You're going back and forth, back and forth, defending B-Hop and Hagler for fighting smaller fighters, shitting all over Golovkin for doing it, saying that I'm the one who shit on them and praised him where I didn't do that. Wait a minute, let's go back here, because, wait a minute, hold on. that interview. Exactly. Let's go back. Well, Frankenstein, you're the stupidest motherfucker. I'm sorry, Frankenstein, Golovkin didn't call out Kell Brook. Okay, yeah, he didn't call out Kell Brook. Man. But you know what Golovkin said? He said he would not fight Kell Brook at one time because Kell Brook was too small. And then he took his ass on the radio station of Power 106 in L.A. where well, I said he wouldn't fight any welterweight. That's what he said. That's not true because he fucking said all along, like you just made in a video, that he would fight fucking Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. So now you're contradicting yourself. No, I did. He never said he'd fight a welterweight. I didn't say that. But he did. We all know he said. I said that that before I said that in my video, bro. To fight Floyd, right? And you use that to shit on him and hate on him. Right. I'm not. And now you're reversing it. You're going back and forth, back and forth. Ah, you're going back and forth and forth or back, whatever. Shitting all over Golovkin for doing it, saying that I'm the one who shit on them and praised him where I didn't do that. Yes, you did. Liar. I didn't shit on any of them. No, yeah, you did. You liar. Not one of them. Liar. Not fucking Deha, not Hagler, not Canelo, not fucking Golovkin. Didn't shit on any of them for fighting Walter Waits. Not me. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's lying right there because he tried to fight Manny Pacquiao and fight Floyd Mayweather. And it's surprising nobody called him out on it except for me. Why are you lying? He didn't try to fight them. Yes, he did. He was fucking... How many times I, I already explained myself it is. Shut up. I let's forward this because I already, I already say the facts of what how, how he was trying to pursue those fights. ...to get fights to fill in the dates. And that's exactly what happened that year, right? He had fucking fights fall through. Guys fucking pull out. It was very difficult to make fights. Canelo dropped the belt. I mean, it was a bad year for Golovkin trying to get a big name in the ring. Yeah, Andre Ward was there when he had a chance to take it, but he didn't take the fight. So, Arizona Lara was there. He didn't take that fight either. So, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Sergio Mora. Nobody talks about this one. The Latin Snake. That fight, he t- he turned down that fight. <laughs> Yeah, Sergio Mora, the guy who can't punch. Golovkin ducked that fight. Yeah, nobody talks about that, right? How come you never mentioned that? Hmm? Yeah, so you could say it was a bad year for him, but the fact is that he had opportunities to take some fights and he didn't do it. So he's also at fault for reason why that fights didn't get made either. So let's continue. But you're going to ignore the, the whole time frame, the whole truth the whole history to put out speculation. I'm not ignoring history. Not it's not speculation. It's all fact. Because it's not you don't like the facts because it doesn't go to your um, agenda or narrative. how much you guys fucking hate Golovkin. I don't hate Golovkin. Like, you said a bunch of stuff that I said. Hold up, hold up. I can tell you right now that Golovkin has a better race of A than Deontay Wilder. I said that Golovkin has now stepped up the competition now to the point that he is fighting better opposition. There's not much room. You, can, you can't really criticize him to that point that he stepped up the competition. But nonetheless... Nonetheless, like you're doing now, you're trying to stack up resumes with Bluff against other middleweights like Tony Zale, all right? You like others like them and Hopkins and Hagler. 
it's warranted to the fact that I have, I could, it might, me and a librarian, we have a right to take, or Mr. Doc, we have a right to take exception to that and go evaluate his resume. But you have a problem with that. So it is what it is. It isn't factual. I didn't say any of that. Yes, you did. I never hated on those guys for doing those things. I never defended Belovkin for doing those things. Yes, you did. So well, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. The you're videos are still like, up, I man. I got your videos. Things, but you're the two guys that fucking are defending. I'm as much a fucking historian as 90%. <laughs> yeah, a guy who didn't know who Sugar Ray Robinson, who he fought. A guy who didn't... Who, who <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man, man, man. A guy who didn't know that Dwight Muhammad Kawi was a Hall of Famer. Okay. <laughs> oh shit. Talk about a guy who claims he's a historian compared to 90% of the other people who's on YouTube. Get the fuck out of here, man. I ain't going to play no more of this shit. I'm done the I'm done di dissecting everything, every fucking stupid thing you said in this video in response towards me and Mr. Doc. Of course the librarian to some degrees. Nothing more. I'm out. <laughs>